Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about that time. Once again, for Tuesday night live streams on the MC Mer Show. I mean, this is something I've been waiting to take a look at for a while. And you know we've been doing a lot of plug-and-play stuff lately. Just, I, I'm buzzing for them. But this was a unique unit right here. This is the first flashback in existence. This dates back to 2004, and it shows it if you take a look here. Even this uh, lovely menu is somewhat remarkably dated back to the uh, PS2 age. You know, this is supposed to be <clears throat> the 7800 Mini. At least that's what it looks like. There's very little 7800 going on here, but there is 7800 going on here. And to be fair, the 7800 was backwards compatible, which meant it played 2600 games, so it's fair that they have some 2600 games on here. After all, this was their first attempt at a flashback. They wanted to give you, you know, the Atari stuff you know and love. Still, from what I understand, purists had a big issue with this thing. The versions weren't 100% you know, spot on, and I can see that in some of the ones I'm looking at. A little bit difference in the uh, display on screen, but you're going to see that today. We're going to take a look at some of the 7800 stuff as we have not had a way as of yet to effectively stream 7800 software, and uh, this is the first neat way I can see to do it outside of just straight up retro pioneer or whatever. We're joined by Tyler Mason and Nostalgia. Welcome guys to TNL. We're about ready to get started here. Got a cup of coffee. Some Atari. I can't think of a better place to be. We're a few minutes early here, but I figured I'd give some people time to get on in here. But it's 8 o'clock, so it's time to get started. We've got these funny little replica 7800 sticks. And they're not great, I gotta tell you. One's wonkier than the other. This is the nicer of the two, so we're going with it. Got this unit compliments of CM Retro Gaming. A lot of you watch CM Retro. Uh, a mystery trade. And if you missed our videos on the mystery trade we did, he got some cool stuff, I got some cool stuff. I will link those past videos and the end cards of this presentation so you can catch those on the recap if you didn't already see them. But Adventure, you know what that is. That's 2600 Basically, each one of these cartridges in the stack is an option. Air C Battle is exactly what you think it is. But Asteroids is a 7800 version, and it's a weird one. We're going to take a look at that first. So you can already see the graphics are more up to snuff with what we'd expect for the, you know, later 8-bit systems. This was Atari's last attempt to compete. Back in the day, Gamer has joined us. Welcome back in the day, the largest guns in the gaming business today. Glad to see you here on TNL. Yeah, so it's a different version, man. It's, uh... It doesn't feel right. I gotta say, I've been playing a lot of Asteroids lately. A lot of you have seen that we've got the arcade one-up version in here, and I've been playing it. Oh, man, see, that? that's so weird. Let's talk about why this is weird. First of all, there's no drifting in the ship. When you let go, it lets go. It doesn't continue to fly. And it's like turbocharged. A little tap of this stick, and it goes flying across the screen. I don't have Asteroids for the 7800. So I don't know how to compare this to as far as, you know, how does this controller feel versus the actual unit and on this version. I can tell you, too, that when you press down on the th on the uh, joystick, just like you would a thumbstick on a Xbox controller, it does the hyperspace, and it happens accidentally a lot, which is not good. I mean... It can cause insta-death, so it's not something that you want to happen by accident. I don't even know that that hit me. Rod and Games has joined us. Welcome, Rod. Great to see you on TNL. We are looking at some Atari 7800 games, and I have since found easier ways for us to do that, but I've been wanting to take a look at this flashback console, as, you know, aside from just getting it in my collection for quite a while now, and we've done that. So, again, thanks for CM Retro. We're getting this action going tonight, and it looks like I'm dead, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Double J Jason Joseph has joined us Vader is in the house just in time to see some Atari 7800 action again this is the weirdest feeling dadgum asteroids I've ever played because it just stops and it's like you think that would be easier but when you're used to playing a game one way and then it stops doing what you think it's going to it gets remarkably strange alright that got me I'll get him I'll give it to them. They got me on that one. Pew, pew. 
Let me know how the sound is, if you all need a little bump up in the sound. Again, this is a plug and play unit, so not knowing how it's going to put out, I didn't want to blast anybody's eardrums out. So you did the hyperspace jump there, and I didn't ask it to. But if you press to the left or the right, and it presses down simultaneously, it's going to happen. Vader is security. Good security. Good, affordable security that you can rely on. Double J will hip lock you off a stage before you can even get into trouble. It's a shame I've needed that kind of security at some of our shows, <laughs> but we have. You don't want to get hip locked. Boo! Got him. What's funny is, you know, and I totally didn't do that. I hit to the right and it went forward. Yeah, again, the joysticks on these are really chintzy, but this was the first flashback they made. This was made in 2004. It's not an At Games product. At Games didn't get the license until, I think, 2011. So. This is a very unique and dated unit. This is a, <laughs> I guess at this point you can call it a vintage plug-and-play, and, and those do exist. We're running it AV, upscaling it to 1080 through an AV to HDMI converter from Cool Digital, recommended by Gary at Rock Solid Productions. A lot of you watch his channel. So this is a way to more effectively upscale AV to HD than the units we've used in the past that really have not been as reliable and have not provided as good of a picture like this has. So much better here. Yeah, you know, all in all, I like the way this looks, but it's not, it's the controls that's getting me. And I'm trying to get better at Asteroids, and this isn't helping, because this isn't traditional. And I don't know why the change in control, or why that was even necessary. I mean, if you've played Asteroids Deluxe, you've seen other versions of Asteroids, it's still Asteroids, it just looks a little different. Or maybe there's a backdrop, or a change in the graphics, but that's not what we're dealing with here. This is completely different. We are joined by Mainly Gaming. Welcome Mainly Gaming to Tuesday Night Livestream. Great to have you here. Again, the Atari 7800 was a last-ditch effort. It tried to compete with the Sega and the NES, and it just couldn't. It had better graphics than what we had seen in the past from the 5200 and the 2600, of course. But it had no library. And, you know, to, to get around that, to circumvent it, to get away from that problem, they, uh, they made it backwards compatible. It was one of the first systems to really need to do that. You know, you could play 2600 games on it. And they hoped that that would still sell. But isn't that kind of crazy? I mean, we, we love backwards compatibility now, but you would think back then no one would want to look back yet. So that's what they were banking on. Like, well, there's a few games they can play on this. I mean, my 7800 collection is robust. And that said, there's probably not more than 30 games here. There just weren't many games for it. Ice Pirate is here. Welcome, Ice. Uh, see how chintzy that is? I mean, I barely tapped it and he flies right into the dadgum thing. Mm. Tom Davis says, that is not authentic. Your controller is to blame. And it is. And Brian's Man Cave is here. Welcome, BMC. There is some Atari here. Yeah, it's definitely not authentic. It's the little flashback version of the original. And uh, it is touchy as an I don't know what. Again, if you hit to the left or right too hard and it accidentally depresses, again, like a thumbstick, which I don't know why it would need to. There's two buttons and both buttons shoot. I don't need two shoot buttons. It'll hyper warp your ass and that, that'll kill you, you know, sometimes. And if it happens when you don't want it to, that can also kill you. So, but you know, again... I'm not here to break this thing's balls. I was actually very happy to get this in my collection. I was happy to make the trade with CM Retro. Had a lot of fun with that. Made for a great video opportunity and some cool things for us to receive on both our respective ends. And, you know, this is just an oddity. This is an oddity of the uh, plug-and-play world. It's one of those things that I've seen these out and about, and I've passed over them many times. Seen them at flea markets. Seen them at yard sales. But at the time that I saw them, I was not actively collecting these. It wasn't something I thought I needed. I have a 7800 Pro system. It's a nice 7800 Pro system. I mean, it's cherry, mint, chew it. It's flavored. 
and like I said, a pretty nice collection of very good quality 7,800 games in stock. So I don't need this, right? But you know, fast forward to years later, we're uh, we're live streaming, we're uh, reviewing, we're YouTubing. That's a different scene now, and you know, I need a way to be able to live stream these and to capture footage of it. So for ease of that, we at least got to get the AV going on, which the original does not have. I don't know a way to upscale coax to anything. There isn't anything on the market that I've seen. See, I just pressed forward there. I didn't even press forward there. Look, he's hyper jumping all over the place. It's virtually unplayable. If this was the only thing you had to compare it to and this was Asteroids, that's fine, but mm. BMC still only have the flashback. Eight been tempted for the nine. It has the SD card. You know, talk. Let's talk more about the nine. Somebody else wrote into the show. Uh, I think it was yesterday. About they did their update, and now on their capture card, they're not getting sound either. So he's having the same problem I have, and it's that Stella emulator that they're running. That thing's half baked, man. I hate to tell them. I don't think they know what they're doing, a hundred percent with that. I think they're experimenting with that. Because I'm not getting any sound on that thing anymore unless I'm just playing it straight up. Straight up, it's fine. But if you try to use it, a capture card, doesn't work. Tom Davis says they are really nice, but modding it works nicely. I got to say, with the mods worked great. I'm happy to have it. I love what's on it. But 50% of my reasoning between you know behind having it was for ease of streaming. And if there's not going to be any sound, that's disappointing. So, so I guess if you know going in, that's what I say about most of these things. If you know going in then you're not going to be disappointed, but. I believe we have a centipede version here, a 7800 version. Ah, yes. Let's check it out. Ice Pirate says, never played a <laughs> Stella. <laughs> BMC says, dang, what about the Retron 77? Same problem, believe it or not. Exact same problem can't get any sound out of that dadgum thing on the capture card and uh can't get anything out of it as far as uh sometimes it doesn't even register at all the elgato just ignores it super weird man so i'd have to say ultimately the i've had a lot of people ask and i've seen a lot of people on the tube try to compare the two which is better the flashback 9 or the retron 77 i'm still going with the flashback because regardless of whether or not you can put cartridges in the Retron, it's got serious compatibility issues anyway, so that kind of falls flat on its face there. And then, you know, yeah, I can go ahead and put the mods on it, but then we just come down to which one works the best as far as capture. I know that's not an issue for everybody, but for me personally it is. And in that case, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work at all. We had a few streams, an unboxing and a review when the Retron 77 came out, and it seemed like it was going to be the best thing since sliced bread. But since then, it has ultimately failed. There's been a lot of complaints about... Oh my god, I didn't do that. There's been a lot of complaints about the controller. And now they've made a new controller that they expect you to buy to improve on the fact that the other one doesn't work right. That's kind of crappy, but that's Hyperkin, I guess. Golvelius? Did you ask me about Golvelius? I beat Golvelius once a year, whether I want to or not. One of my favorites. I got it for, I think, my 10th birthday. Love that freaking game. Golvelius. I'm going to say it. It's better than Legend of Zelda. It's out there. Don't throw things at me. But it is. To be fair, it's not, because it came after the fact. It was a cool game by Compile. It was obviously a Zelda clone, but they didn't just clone it. They went all out. Govelius was beautiful. Amazing soundtrack. Cool items. Just fantastic. BMC says, well, that's crappy news. It is, and I'm not done running tests. I'm really not. I'm not done running tests. I need to get with Hyperkin and see what they say about it. But I don't think they know anything more about it than the At Games guys. Do. And we're still talking, I think we're still talking about the same emulator, that Stella emulator that they're talking about. So it's relatively new stuff, this version of it, and I think it's just not compatible. But now that I'm getting people telling me, you know, I had a rep from At Games tell me maybe my update just needs to be redone or it's just out of date. But this guy that wrote into the show just bought his, just did the update. So I know for a fact he's got the most updated thing out there because he just did it. Just pulled it off their site. 
So it's not that. He's having the same problem as me. What did you say better than Zelda? We need to talk off stream. Well, we can, and I can tell you all about it. And if you look on the channel, I mean, I did videos on Govelius, and some people don't like it. But Govelius is just fantastic. Govelius Valley of Doom. Back when Compile was Compile. It exists now as Compile Heart, and they primarily do JRPGs. A uh, completely different group of people, too, from what I understand, but still the same branding or whatever. But yeah, early Compile game and one of the coolest RPGs out there. Definitely one of the coolest on the Sega Master System. Just a really neat game. Really neat graphics. Cool items. Cool enemies. Cool maps. Lots of hidden stuff. And not stuff you have to find. It's one of those games that you can try to get through it without 100%ing it. And it makes it tougher. Just like you can Zelda. I know Double J Jason Joseph there. He'll take Zelda out with a wooden sword. And he won't be afraid. That's not something I'm good enough to do. Speaking of him, he just threw $5 in the tip jar. Thank you Double J Jason Joseph for that donation for being the best part of the MC Mer Show. Can always count on you but yeah he's he's one of the resident zelda experts in our crew and you know i also beat legend of zelda once a year whether i need to or not but because it's just that experience that you want to continue having it's something you got to have at least once a year in fact i got two games of it going right now one on my 3ds and just one on uh on my wii u download <clears throat> Gamer Jeff has joined us. BMC, you heading out? Appreciate you stopping in. So glad to have people in the stream tonight to check this out. I know I'm playing terribly here, but I'm trying to keep up with the chat at the same time, and I'm getting centipeded. <clears throat> Gamer Jeff has joined us. Welcome, Gamer Jeff. Always great to have you on the scene for TNL. This isn't a bad version of Centipede. It doesn't look that much better, but it's just a different version. Atari's all about versions to me. I just like to see it. Coffee and Atari, you gotta love it. But yeah, funny you bring up Golvelius, man. That's just one of them games that it's a, uh, it's one you gotta play, man. I'll say it this way: that's almost kind of inflammatory to sit there and say that something's better than something else. Let's don't put it that way. I don't want you to look at it in that light or to gauge it that way. I just want you to think about it as if you like Legend of Zelda, and who doesn't? You probably will enjoy Golvelius very much. So emulate it, buy it. It's kind of rare. Last I looked, it was like 50 bucks on the bay. I scored a copy complete for 10 bucks a couple years ago. Already had a copy, but you know, I wasn't going to leave it there if it was 10 bucks. God, this stick is so touchy. Yeet dinner. But yeah, it's, it's worth playing, man. It's got those... 2D platforming dungeons. It's got those top-down dungeons like you're used to in Zelda. And then it's got this overworld that's just amazing to explore and some of the coolest soundtracks you'll hear on 8-bit games. I've actually uh, I've actually learned a few pieces from it on the guitar. Transcribed them over just because I thought that much of them. I do that with Master System games. No, I saw it. I got him. V Vader is actually Double J. That's his alter ego. He identifies with a man who had some of the largest shoulders in the wrestling business. But yeah, thank him for that. Y'all are too kind to me. And you know that each and every dime goes toward advancement right here in the MC Mer Cave bringing you bigger and badder streams, bigger and badder productions every time I can. Golden Axe Warrior for the SMS is a total Zelda ripoff, but really fun. Yeah, I've got access to it. I don't have a hard copy. Boy, you let your guard down for two seconds. This thing's coming at you. Captain Retro's actually had two physical copies of it, I think, in the time that I've been in touch with him, and we've both been out picking and whatnot, but I never have. All right, these this centipede's all over me here. Yeah, that would be a good one to do next after that. I gotta tell you, Golden Axe is home to some of the greatest lore. If you really get into the Golden Axe story, and you should, 
you'll really enjoy it. We actually did a part of our D&D campaign that was entirely based loosely on Golden Axe. And they never even knew it because it was just so obscure, the references that I made. But it was right in there. And if you really get through all the Golden Axes and you really love it and you haven't played Golden Axe Beast Rider on, you know, current gen systems like PS3 and Xbox 360, I got to recommend it. You can get the game for under five bucks. People said it was terrible. People don't know what they're talking about. The game was great. And it expanded on that lore very well. Told the story of Golden Axe and beyond and had lots of replay value. So that's what I'm going to recommend to you. All right, so that's Centipede. Let's see what else that's on here that is 7,800. <laughs> Crystal Castles is not. Food Fight, I don't think, is either. I know Gravatar wasn't. Haunted House isn't. Millipede isn't. Planet Smashers is one. So some of these are just the 2600 versions of themselves. Planet Smashers. Copyright 1990. You know, by 88, they were reissuing some of the 2600 games. They'd come in the kind of maroon, dark red boxes with the old box art on it those were you know pretty much reprints they intended to sell them again for this system so you've got those variants and i do collect some of those <clears throat> but they were trying they were just there was no way at that point not with the nes i mean god we did not know what to do when we got nintendo and sega but mostly Nintendo. I mean, even Sega didn't really have a chance. Yeah, there's no Pac-Man on here. There's nothing really... Not a lot of licensed stuff on this one. Again, this was the first flashback. This thing is 15 years old, practically, at this point. So this was their first attempt. And again, a lot of the purists took major issue with the versions of the games that they got. This is a Pew Pew special right here. Unlike what we've already seen tonight, this is not something I've ever played before. I am not familiar with this. It looks like there's a shield counter down there. Those purple spheres in that one bar. And I don't know what an earth shield is. Are we going to attack the Earth? Are we defending the Earth? What are we doing here? Oh my god. You can just let her rip. Oh my god, that's ear piercing. Is Captain here? I didn't see him sneak in. Alright, so you can change the color on that. I don't know what that does. We've got dodecahedrons and magic sperms with rainbow colors coming at us. And this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I have no idea what we're doing. I also like Red Velvet Cake. Vader requests an NES Virtual Boy. I actually do not own a Virtual Boy. I think Captain still has one. Captain actually got one in the box, restored the box real nice. I don't even know if he still has it. But it actually did work, unlike, you know, the ones you see with the lines on the screen and all that. It was a nice unit. Someday I'll find one. I've just, every time I have found one, it's been somewhere where, you know, they obviously knew what it was and it was too much for me to want to pay. All right, let's, let's sum this game up real quick. This is weird. Because right now, it seems like level one would have been over already. And I've been hit by things and I'm not dead. Did my wings just change color? Is that what happened? My shield is out. I'm still getting... It. Okay, now my earth shield's going down. Can you imagine any other shooter where you get this much of a life bar? I mean, a beat-em-up bar is pretty much what you're starting with here. This ship's practically invincible. You're never going to get hit this many times. Kevin says I've owned three or four, sold them all. Yeah, for what they bring. That box restore is one of my proudest moments. That was a heck of a job. Somebody duct taped it all over and he was somehow able to get the tape off and restore the box as good as it was going to get so 
pretty outstanding. If you'd have seen the before shot of the box, you wouldn't believe it. The Retro Nobody is here. Welcome, Dino, uh, to Tuesday Night Live Streams. We're checking out Planet Smashers on the original Atari Flashback. 7800 Mini launched in 2004. Not an At Games product. A uh, Another company was doing it at the time. It's interesting when you read the history about all what they've done with these things over the course of them. And honestly, I want to collect every flashback now. It takes up so much space, but my god, I'm in it to win it now. There's absolutely no need to even have them either. Virtual Boy Fun starting now. Yeah, because the thing is, that's almost one of those items that you think you are going to have to just pony up for. Because if you find one at Granny's Yard Sale, it probably doesn't work. That was just one of those items that's not known for longevity or durability over time. It's like I'm not even worried about getting hit because I can't die. And what is this? Do you just play eternally and there's no end to the game? I mean, there would at least be levels, wouldn't there? A boss? Something? The power-ups do nothing. You really don't need them. Yes, I have that many. It was the Wild West of plug and plays. I have collected quite a few of them now. I'm getting quite a shelf, too. We're running out of room in here. I'm hoping I'm going to get one of these power ups and it's like, hey, now you're on level two. Okay, this is ridiculous. Is there no end to this game? There's no end to this game. All right, you know what? It's just going to fly. We'll see how long it takes him to die. Apparently not long. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see what else we're going to do. Oh my god, he's still going. I mean, if there's no end to the game and you can't die, I just can't see playing this for that long. And God, once you get that super shot, you, you can't stop. They can't stop you. All right, we're going to look at something else because this is not the greatest thing I've ever seen. I mean, why aren't there levels? Why aren't there bosses? Cabot has joined us as well as Jester's Gaming Vids. Welcome, guys, to our Tuesday Night Livestream Atari Flashback Classic Game Console. It looks it, too. It's so dated, but so cool. There's something different. Like I said, I've been wanting to take a look at this thing. Tuesday Night Livestream was the perfect place to do it. We had a little break in the action as far as between new releases and other stuff going on, so it's a good time. We did Asteroids. We did Centipede. We did Planet Smashers. Desert Falcon actually is the 7800 version, it says, so let's take a look. Haven't got to look at everything on this yet. Oh, that definitely looks better. 1987, yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Pew, 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 pew. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but it's not bad. I do think I have a hard copy of this. Yeah, I'm just getting into the pie scene. Really, all emulating scene. I just have never had a need for it. But it's a different ball game when you're talking about live streaming and all that. Some of these old systems, there's no other way to fly. The The stick feels like it's fighting me here. Like I tried to go right there and just wasn't doing it. Oh my goodness. I think we can start this, uh, I think we can start this one over. <clears throat> My game is over. <laughs> you 
Yeah, this stick, you know, you might hit to the left and it'll go up. You might hit to the right and it goes down. It, it just really does not control well. Went right there, but it didn't do anything. Okay, I'm like literally stuck on this tower and I'm just spawn dying. Liked and shared the stream. Thanks, Jester. That way people can come in and watch me spawn die on this tower. I literally can't get it off of here. I never really got into Atari games this nostalgia. You know, I can see why a lot of people didn't. Costume's MS Agent is here. 7800 games running on NES on a chip technology is weird. That it is. And we do have to find out what happened to Robocop's dough, no doubt. But yeah, I mean, unless you're just really nostalgic for Atari stuff, and I am, because I mean, at one point that was all we had. And I had neighbors that had these other Atari systems that later in the 80s I did get into playing them. So I do have a want to go back and play those. But a lot I've had people write into the show too and just say, look, you know, this isn't for me. I can't stand the way these games look. They don't play well and they're terrible. And it's like I don't really have an answer for that at that point. You know, if you have to spawn right on the thing and just die repeatedly, I mean, this is terrible. Surely the actual game wouldn't play this way. That's ridiculous, dude. So if you die on a structure, the game is over because you will spawn on it. Antonio Cartella is joining us. Welcome, Antonio, to Tuesday Night Live Stream. You were in time to see me get my butt tore apart on some Desert Falcon 7800 on the Atari 7800 Mini as we marvel at how horrible the controllers with this plug-and-play are. You know, I've played worse, but, uh, yeah, this definitely leaves something to be desired in the control department. Still, this is an oddity. I'm glad that I have it in my collection. I want to say thank you again to CM Retro for making that mystery trade. He scored this thing for two bucks at a yard sale, so he didn't have anything in it. He didn't have any interest in it. He doesn't collect for this system, nor does he collect these systems. So I traded him a big pile of PS4 stuff that I knew he would like that I didn't need anymore. Or I had other ways to play or other copies of, and... He sent me this and a whole bunch of other Atari goodies. And again, if you didn't see that video, I'm talking about some goodies, some really cool time capsulated old Atari stuff in a box. And again, I will link that video in the end cards of this video so people watching the recap can check it out. Really cool stuff, as well as, you know, he did a video showing what he got from me. Mer Nation rising up. We're rising up. We really are. And I'm glad to see that. Glad to see that people are into what we're doing here. We're having a great time looking at these things. And we're all learning stuff, you know. I mean, every day I learn something new. And I've got so many people writing in that are like, hey, did you know this or did you know that? And it's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for writing in. Or, you know, the other way, I think we've helped a lot of folks too. We blew up the Sphinx. A lot of people asking about adding the ROMs and stuff to some of these systems we've been experimenting with. Helping talk some people through that. John at Genix Grown Up has been very instrumental with that as well. So it's community, man. It's community. And that's what makes us so great, man. Everybody's real gamers, really playing and really talking about it. So it's just awesome. It's also awesome that we got off the first stage of Desert Falcon. I feel like we're making some uh, headway here. Planet Smashers is there. We uh, we were wailing on that earlier. And if you know more about Planet Smashers than me, let's talk about that. Antonio is a collector of many things. Atari has some fantastic complete and box treasures that you can kind of gawk at there. If you follow him on Twitter, he posts a lot of really interesting shots of some of the things in the collection. But uh, I had never played Planet Smashers, and we were just playing that, and... There's like, there's no levels. You just shoot eternally, and it's ridiculously easy. You have a power meter bigger than you would have in most beat-em-ups, and it's like you can't die. So am I missing something there, or do I need to play a, a more difficult mode? That's usually not the case with me. It seemed very functional. It seemed like it'd be a fun game, but with no bosses and no real point to it, if you're just going to go eternally and play for 14 hours for a high score without even really trying, it seemed like kind of a snooze, albeit one that 
was one of the better looking games I've seen on here. Vader wants rag it or redeem it vids. It's been a while since we have anything to rag or redeem. And I think that there's one coming up, but I can't remember which one it was. I need to look back through my stuff. <clears throat> Alright, so what else do we have here? We have <clears throat> Food Fight. Food Fight is the 7800 version, allegedly. I always confuse Food Fight with Fast Food, which is also a hilarious game. Food Fight. Fast Food, I've played a lot of. Food Fight, I did not. Wadoosh! Oh, no, no. We gotta aim better than... Oh, he, he spawned and got me. Make it happen. I will make it happen. There is something that needs a rag or redeem it, and I cannot remember what it was for the life of me, but I know it exists. Got him. Ooh Got him. Oh, the trajectory on that pie was all wrong. I'm going to get in here. Is fast food the one where you're the big mouth eating things? Yes, it is. You're a pair of lips going after some hot dogs. <laughs> it's epic. And Food Fight's a game that I have on 2600 and 7800 and I like very much. Bacon and potato soup is good. It is good. I made some not too long ago. Didn't regret it. Oh! Hookshot, what's up? Out of my kitchen. Game over. Why is it game over? Why is it game over? I didn't die. I thought I was doing good. What did I do wrong? Eat the cone. Okay. Didn't know that was the uh, goal there. Wait, Food Fight was released for the 2600? I'm pretty sure I've got it over there unless I dreamed it. I'll look for you in just a second. We'll have some show and tell. I'm pretty sure it's over there. I think I picked it up at Athcon a few years ago. Somebody had all their Saturn stuff and their Dreamcast stuff. Everything was priced top dollar. Then they had this dusty box under their table full of old Atari junk. One dollar, take it. Get any of this stuff and get it out of here. I was like, oh, come on. I'll take it. I got a copy of Taito's uh, Frontline, and I got Worm War 1, and I'm pretty sure I got Food Fight there, too. Let's see if we've got it over here. I'm pretty sure we do. We got a minute. Yeah, no. I think, once again, I might be thinking of Food Fight, or fast food. Yeah, because I've got it on that. I think I'm thinking of fast food again. That's the one I got. I don't think it was. <clears throat> Let's see. Food Fight 2600. No, it may it may be just seventy eight hundred. I'm thinking of fast food. Burger time. Loving some burger time. Mm. 
Ooh. Nice shot. We're getting ice cream cones. What got me? You're not gonna get me. Yeah, get on we. You're not going to get me. Oh, he got me, Dad Gummit. Oh, they're pinning me down here. No fast food 5200 either. Yeah, I guess it was exclusive to that. All right, is Mr. Do on Atari? When I played Mr. Do, it was always on ColecoVision. <clears throat> Lauren Kukler is here. Can't thank you enough for helping me set up my Atari flashback nights. This is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Had a lot of talking back and forth with people about getting these set up, and people are having a great time with them, so you're more than welcome. I'm so glad you got it to work. <clears throat> Those updates are very temperamental. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm getting all choked up here. We're all trying to get over bronchitis. But uh, once you get them to work, then you just you don't ever have to mess with it again. And it's been such a great thing to have. And we're seeing so many of the homebrews and stuff, which is really interesting to me. <clears throat> Apparently, Mr. Dew was on 2600. God, what a great cabinet. I can't imagine having that. But Mr. Dew was great. I think Dig Dug with just a little bit of a variation to the play. But, uh, man, Mr. Dew was my jam. That was so awesome. But, Lauren, glad to see you here on Tuesday Night Live Streams. Having a good turnout so far. I'm glad everybody came out for this one because I was very excited to play this specific flashback. Again, this is just one of those things. This flashback is 15 years old practically now. This was 2004 when this came out. Not sure of the month. I do, I do. We're going to look at Crystal Castles here. This is a 2600 version. Nothing you haven't seen before, but it looks a little different to scale for some reason on this system. And, uh, you know, people were talking that, you know, they just, it's just really big on the screen. You know, it's different. And, of course, the controller feels a little different. Not in a way that I can't handle it, but it's a little choppy. Yeah, we're getting over colds and stuff here, and I had Crystal Burgers for dinner, and that was a mistake, so. Playing with a couple of slight handicaps tonight, but we're going to get through it. Dad, come and Bentley Bear, you get out of there. Oh, I can't. Bentley Bear does get me emotional. I want a Bentley Bear t-shirt, and such a thing does not seem to exist. Oh my god, this stick. All right, Bentley Bear, we got to lure him out. <clears throat> I'm really having to fight this thing. All right, second level. If you're just joining the stream or if you've been here for a while, no matter, drop a like. Share the stream with a friend. Let everybody know about the action going on right here and every week at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday night live streams. Lots of great stuff coming your way. Lots of great stuff coming this first quarter. We may have some new uh, NIS releases that we're going to review. There's definitely a big march in store for us. A lot of uh, games coming that month. But in between releases, we're going to get done with some things that I just am long overdue looking at. WCW was fantastic 
And ironically, it was fantastic at a time when it had all of WWF's people. But, you know, that was an awesome time. Awesome time for some wrestling. Bentley Bear, I didn't want you to go up there. <clears throat> all right, Bentley Bear. Bentley Bear, I need you to get the dad. He walks right over and doesn't get it. Oh my goodness, get the hat. Well, that hat didn't last long. The arcade version of this is featured on the At Games published volumes for Xbox One, PS4, and it's so great to have. Billy says, I picked up a PlayStation Classic for 25 bucks at Best Buy. I'd say that's worth the cost of admission. Especially knowing that you can do some modification to it, you know. I regret paying what I paid. But I wanted to review it day one. We got the $25 rebate on it. So, I ended up having 75 in it. That's still too much, but... But, you know... I like to review those things day one here, and it, in a sense, too, is a plug-and-play, albeit a very boring one. It was kind of neat to see Battle Arena to Shinden again. <clears throat> it had been years since I played that. But again, is it worth the cost of admission? I don't know. Didn't see a huge problem with the games that were on there as far as the way they played, but the games in general just weren't that great. A lot of people complained Tekken didn't feel right. I'm not a big Tekken head, so I wasn't so dialed in that I could really comment on that. But Oh, Bentley Bear. Yeah, get it together, Bentley. All right, there we go. That's the old Pepper Bentley. That's the old pitch in it. Oh, come on, Bentley Bear. Oh, Bentley Bear. We gotta lure him out of there. Lure him out, Bentley. But yeah, the, apparently you can easily mod that uh, PlayStation Classic with a flash drive. A lot of cool ways that you can do that. So I'm looking forward to doing that with mine. I think that's a good reason to have bought one for anybody. But 25 bucks, that's great, man. Yeah, I wouldn't leave it there for that if I didn't have one. Got stragglers. Dad Gummity stuck. Oh, that wasn't a bad game of Bentley Bear going on. <clears throat> but yeah, it was really close up on the screen for some reason. I don't know if it's just. I mean, it didn't. It obviously didn't mess me up any, but it just looks different in that sense. Top spot one twenty three is here. Hey, Mer, a quick reminder: all we fans today is the last day for the Wii Shop. Let's talk about that for just a minute. I'm glad you're here, Top Spot. And that's a good point to bring up. I wanted to bring that up in the Murcast that I talked about this morning. Uh, yeah, uh, apparently they shut down your ability to buy Wii Points on it a while ago. So the fact that it's open right now doesn't matter. <laughs> and that really upset me because I wanted to do a stream of doing some last minute purchases on the last day of the Wii Shop channel. So yeah, if you do have your points, again, I'm glad you brought that reminder in here, good intel, get in there and spend them, but dadgum, I really wanted to look at that tonight too, and now we're not gonna get to. I don't have any points on there, it's not gonna accept any payment from me. So this is nothing to do, that's sad. But I wanted to make one last run and get everybody behind it, and everybody, buy one game on it. Just throw one last tip in the jar there for the uh, Wii Classic Shop channel there and let her rip. I was there when you paused Final Fantasy VII and told me to give... <laughs> yeah, that was one I got pretty emotional at the end of. 25 bucks gets you an original one also. It really does. I buy PS1s for 5 bucks all the time. And sometimes they're really messed up. But sometimes you clean them right up and they're okay. And parts for them are dirt cheap. They don't cost much to outfit. 
break uh, breakout look everything's really big on here versus what I've seen on the original version so it's good for people like me whose eyes are bad but yeah I wanted to do one last run on the Wii shop channel and uh one up woman commented on the Murcast this morning and said that they actually already suspended your ability to buy Wii points on there. So she had some left. She said she's going to do a stream, do some last purchases and some gameplay. But yeah, that kind of took me out of the running for it. I wanted to give them one last. I wanted to organize something that's kind of snuck up on us, but I was going to get everybody to get on there, drop five bucks on an NES game, and just show Nintendo that we're still out there. We're still thinking of it. And. Look at that, the ball went right through it. It didn't even hit anything. Don't remember ever having that problem in Breakout. Breakout! Truckosaurus! I mean, I guess it's time to let it go. I mean, we still got the Wii U shop, but I don't know. Spent many Sundays in my undies looking at the Wii Shop channel and looking at the goofy Wii wear and looking at Turbo Graphics games and just other really wild oddities that you could download on this Nintendo system. So unlike Nintendo to have so much stuff outside of its own branding available, but it really did. There was so much Turbo Graphics stuff. Yeah, I had 14 left over. Took forever to figure out what to get. I would have too. I'd have looked forever. Ice Pirate says she did do the stream. I didn't get a notification. I wonder if paddles work on this. That's a good question. Might ought to dig some out. I tell you what, I'll test them when I do dig them out and I'll let you know. I'd liable to spend the rest of the stream looking for him in my parts room. But I've got a good set. The Adventures of Bayou Billy. It's funny you say that because we're, we're running ROM tests on the Legends flashback right now. And because we did the A file first just to test them, that was like one of the first ROMs I downloaded on it. And it's not recognizing them, which means the firmware update is not the right one. But we're going to try to do that and get all the NES games on the Legends flashback. It'll end up being all of those as well as all the Sega stuff on two separate 16 gigabyte SD cards. And then we'll do updates on how that went. I'm going to go watch that Murcast when I'm done here. Yeah, what we were talking about, SNES, was uh, the fact that Amiibos are drying up. You know, and really they should be at the height of the height with Smash. And they are. People are buying up what's left, but... The scalpers are able to even scalp stuff that wasn't even rare before just because you can't go into a store anymore and buy it. Entire displays are gone. So it's just really weird. So is this better than the wrestling plug and play? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, didn't, I never liked that Steel Cage Challenge. That was a hokey turd of a game. It's a punch kicker game. <sighs> I like the graphics on it. It's neat to look at. And it's a wrestling game. I mean, there's worse things to play, but... You know, I think back in the day, we always used to play WrestleMania just straight up. We used to play WrestleMania Challenge. And then we used to play games like... Uh, I mean, WCW wasn't too bad on NES. And, of course, Pro Wrestling. But that game, Steel Gates Challenge, just wasn't that great. You know where Steel Case Challenge was good was on Sega CD. That had one of the most in-depth rosters of a game of that type and ran off the same engine or whatever the right word is as Raw and Royal Rumble and all those that were Flying Edge but still published by LJN. Ice Pirate put the link there. Thank you, Ice. Matt Mania. I don't have Matt Mania. I don't think. I've got title match pro wrestling or something. Oh my god, these sticks are killing me. 
All right, let's see what else we got. Come on. Battle zone. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going in the battle zone. I'm having what I'm wanting done. I just blew up. Has the Murcast replaced talk? No, not at all. Murcast I do once in a blue moon. And it has to be something that is just, you know, weighing heavy on my mind that I want to talk with the community about. I like the Black Ops 4 stuff that we did. I did them, but I'll never do those again. It wasn't something that, you know, it's not going to be a regular thing. But every once in a while, I like to get on there with some gameplay in the background and just talk turkey, not scripted, just kind of get some things off the chest and then get a little feedback from everybody about what's going on in their area. I want to hear, oh, no, it's not like that here. There's amiibos everywhere. We're in the land of amiibos and honey. But no, by no means is that going to be a regular thing. Murcasts are just, because, you know, I'm not a news channel. That's not what I do. But if it's something that's really affecting something I'm really into for the moment, we may take a minute to talk about it. I'm getting tore up. This tank's a dadgum big. It can't get out of its own way. This game is better in vector graphics. No doubt. You get hit and everything goes all saved by the bell on you. Oh, that didn't get me. But when it does, I really want that K. Rule Amiibo. You might look on GameStop. I think they started pre-ordering those again. I could be wrong. I got all mine ordered through Best Buy. Because Best Buy gives you discounts on Amiibos because their system doesn't know they're not games. So you end up getting them all for like 12 bucks a piece instead of 15 the Voltron pinball machine is finished and on its way back to me. Yeah, I gotta play that before you get rid of it. Of course, I'm sure you're gonna do a video on it first, but... Oh my god, I'm terrible at this. Alright, what else we got? Let's see. K. Rule. New. Pre-order, yeah, it's it's not grayed out anymore. So, yeah, hop on GameStop's app right now. Get that sucker pre-ordered, by God. Get it to pick up at your local store if it'll let you. Sometimes they don't even charge you. You can just go pay at the store. Robot Tank is better also. I don't think I've played Robot Tank before. I know I don't have that. At least I don't think I do. God, I never get time to go through and do inventory. I need to hire someone to do that. Gravitar. I love Gravatar. I'm terrible at it, but I love it. But yeah, man, get you that K rule. And if K rules up, probably the other ones are too. GameStop seems to really replenish their pre order supply a lot more often than like, you know, Amazon and Best Buy, once they're gone, they don't usually even And if you if you tell it to email you and let you know that it's back in stock, it never does. Oosh. Don't fly into the sun? Come on. The stick, though. Oh, my lord, this stick. Get in there. Oh, my god, the heavy fire coming. Ashcan says, I see only Funko Pops. No, Are you talking about on GameStop? I'm on their app right now, and I pulled up, I just searched K Rule, and it pulled up the Amiibo as one of the first results. And the order's open to pre-order it. That bar's grayed out if it doesn't let you. Oh my god, come on. I'm great at Gravatar. Not. Ooh, fancy stepping. Ooh, fancy. You better get out of here. <laughs> oh, Gravatar is in my top 10 2600 games. I never had much experience with it back in the day. 
Uh, it's one I want to get better at. It's my kind of game. But nobody I knew had it back then. It wasn't one of those games we spent time on. Kevin says, so this was the original bullet hell shooter, eh? <laughs> it could have been. It seemed like it was hell there for a minute. And yes, my ship definitely is what you said it was. I can't I have no way to say it's not. You know what else looks like that is in the air sea battle, the little cannons. Look like a couple of boners. Uh oh. Space combat. Oh, come on. Alright, that's it. Come on. Gravitar. Gravitar. I'm terrible at it and I won't get far. Gravitar. 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 I suck. Alright, we're going to get aggressive now. We're going crazy. Gravitar, I just blew up. Gravitar! These ships, quit coming in here. I'm trying to get my stuff. I get it and then I die. I'm going to hook up the Odyssey 2 and stream it tomorrow night. I can't wait. Please make sure, since I'm not going to get a notification, and you already know that, that you send me one personally so that I don't miss it. Finally did the AV mod to it. That is all. I hope you recorded some of that work because that's a video that you need to put up. Oh my God, that's amazing. I was talking to a guy on the tube the other night about AV modding the Intellivision. And he did it, but he it was exactly what I thought it was. He had to desolder, just fly into the bullets because you know, that's, what, that's what you're supposed to do. This stick and this bullet hell is not getting it. 100 points. Yeah, he had to desolder the entire CPU box and open it up. Just way above my pay grade. I don't solder. I'd like to learn, but I've never fooled with it. Oh, my Lord. I do like this game. I really do. I know it doesn't seem like it right now. <laughs> Come on. Rapid fire. Oh, come on. Once you get it, you're just done. <laughs> Poop on a bun. 100 point hype. Well, man, that is all the time we've got for this episode tonight. But it was a heck of an hour. We got a nice look at the Atari Flashback Classic Game Console. The first in the history of flashbacks. Again, thanks to CM Retro for hooking me up with that thing in the mystery trade. Great to have it. Great to have it on the shelf. More cool history of the plug-and-play lineups just to look at. And another great collection of the games that provides most importantly for ease of streaming. That's why we're interested in these. It allows us to take a look at these things. Not only to marvel at what they were and the whole history of these units and what they've done, but just to look at the games themselves in a situation in which we can't upscale coax systems, at least not that I know of, and it gives us a chance to look at those versions right here on the show, so just uh, fantastic. I want to thank everybody that came out tonight. Great turnout. Great to have everybody here. Great input. Great insight from everybody. Everybody, make sure that you drop a like if you have not already dropped a like, and if you have not already subscribed to the MC Mer Show, we're going to subscribe to the MC Mer Show. Be a part of our nature. We're rising up all the fantastic things we got going on right here on the MC Mer Show. You need to be a player. Make sure that you smack that notification bell so you're always the first to know when new content goes live. You know that I love making it for you. Lots of fantastic stuff coming your way, included but not limited to day one unboxings, day one reviews of games coming up. Just a lot more on the way. We know that we've got... Uh, the vintage gaming vlog my next episode of that's going to be airing very soon probably within the week and another vintage computing episode as well uh been very anxious to get those done just other more time sensitive things have taken predominance on the channel but we're finally getting to where we're shooting some of that a lot of great stuff coming your way just excited to get it all out great time to be playing games micro machine hype <laughs> definitely guys thanks again so much fantastic tnl i will see you all on next week's episode see you then